Down where sunlight never reaches, giant squids grow to sizes that border on the impossible. Eyes as large as dinner plates, arms stretching over 40 feet, locked in a cold world of crushing pressure. Why do these monsters exist in the deep? And how does the abyss sculpt such titans? Understanding why giant squids grow to such impossible sizes means uncovering the forces at play in an environment most of us will never see. But for the animals trapped in perpetual night, size is their only hope for survival. The answer begins with the rules of the deep. At depths where the weight of water piles up to hundreds of times the pressure at the surface, life is forced to obey a different set of rules. The giant squid's world is a realm of extremes. Temperatures hover just above freezing, and oxygen is scarce. Thinning out as you descend below 1,000 meters. Here, every heartbeat and every motion comes at a steep energy cost. In these conditions, metabolism slows to a crawl. For most animals, such a pace would mean stunted growth. But in the abyss, it is the opposite. Cold, high-pressure water acts like a natural refrigerator, preserving energy and allowing bodies to grow larger over time. This phenomenon Abyssal gigantism explains why the deep sea is home to some of the largest invertebrates on Earth. Giant squid, colossal squid, amphipods the size of a human hand, and monstrous isopods all take advantage of the slow motion life enforced by the deep. Large size offers real advantages. It helps store energy for the long stretches between meals and makes it easier to survive when food is unpredictable. In the deep, being big means being efficient. A larger body loses heat more slowly and can carry enough reserves to wait out the famine that is always just around the corner. But the story does not end with energy savings. The chemistry of the deep further shapes these giants. Oxygen dissolves more readily in cold water but at depth it is still in short supply. Some squids are known to suppress their metabolism even further, entering a near dormant state to conserve energy. While this trick is well documented in relatives like the Humboldt squid, for the true giants, Architeuthis and Mesonicotuthis, the details remain elusive, locked away in the darkness. What is certain is that only creatures able to master this slow, patient existence can grow to such impossible sizes. The deep sea, through its pressure and chill, quietly sculpts giants from the ordinary, setting the stage for the extraordinary adaptations that follow. A giant squid's eye is nearly the size of a basketball, up to 27 centimeters across, larger than a human head. In the deep ocean, where sunlight fades into an endless blue-black, this is no accident of evolution. These eyes are built to hunt for light. Every structure, from the wide pupil to the thick spherical lens, is tuned to gather the faintest glimmer. At a thousand meters down, ambient light is a million times dimmer than at the surface, and most creatures would be blind but the giant squid's retina is packed with hundreds of thousands of photoreceptors per square millimeter, all tuned to the blue-green wavelengths that travel farthest through seawater, around 470 to 490 nanometers. This spectral sensitivity is no coincidence. Most of the living signals at depth, prey, rivals, and predators announce themselves not by shape, but by flashes of bioluminescence. When a sperm whale glides through a cloud of plankton, it leaves a glowing trail in the water. A squid's enormous eye can pick up these faint glows from more than 100 meters away, long before a shape or shadow would register. 
Optical models suggest that in these conditions, the squid can detect a moving whale by the bioluminescent wake it stirs, giving the squid precious seconds to react. Even the colossal squid, a close cousin, has taken this adaptation further. Its eyes are not only massive, but equipped with a vertical band of luminous tissue, a photophore, on the rear of each eyeball. While the exact function remains debated, some researchers believe it may help break up the outline of the eye, making the squid less visible to both prey and predators. Others suspect it could serve as a kind of close-range counter-illumination, a way to blend into the scattered glows of the deep. In this world, Vision is not about seeing detail, but about detecting the right signal at the right moment. The physics of light in water, the chemistry of bioluminescence, and the biology of these giants all converge in a single, staring eye. An organ evolved not for beauty, but for survival in the most unforgiving darkness on Earth. At depths below 300 meters, a silent war plays out in the dark. Sperm whales, the largest toothed predators on Earth, dive deep in search of prey, and their main target is the giant squid. Marine biologist Dr. Olga Spack has spent years examining the patterns of healed sucker marks and scars that crisscross the skin of sperm whales. Each circular welt, some as wide as a coffee mug, matches the size and spacing of a giant squid's arm. Some scars are fresh, others decades old, proof that these encounters are not rare, but a regular part of life in the abyss. Inside the stomachs of stranded sperm whales, researchers have catalogued hundreds of squid beaks. These hard, parrot-like jaws resist digestion, piling up as a record of meals eaten far below the surface. Some whales have been found with dozens, even hundreds of beaks, many from mature giant squids measuring 10 meters or more. The size and condition of the beaks tell a story. Whales are not picking off juveniles, but chasing full-grown giants. The larger the squid, the harder it is to subdue, and the more likely it is to leave its mark on a whale's skin. Spack's team has mapped the depth and nature of these encounters. Most battle scars cluster around the head and jaw, suggesting whales attack from above or in front, while the squid lashes out with its tentacles in defense. The violence of these struggles is clear, some whales bear deep gouges, while others show the telltale rings of giant suckers. In this arms race, size is both weapon and shield. For the squid, growing larger means a better chance to fend off attack, to survive the crushing grip of a whale's jaws. For the whale, strength and bulk are needed to overpower prey that fights back with all the force the deep can muster. The abyss is not a place for the timid. Here, evolution favors the bold and the immense, each side locked in an endless contest that drives both to extremes. In 2007, the crew of the San Aspiring Trawler hauled something out of the Antarctic deep that few had ever seen intact, a colossal squid weighing 495 kilograms. Its flesh was dense and pale, its mantle thick as a mattress, and its arms bristled with swiveling hooks, tools for seizing prey in the blackest water on Earth. Scientists gathered in hushed awe as the specimen was preserved, realizing they were face to face with the heaviest invertebrate ever recorded. Yet, in length, the colossal squid rarely matches its cousin. The giant squid, Architeuthis ducks, can stretch up to 13 meters from tip to tip, its tentacles trailing behind like the cables of a suspension bridge. But where the giant squid is long and slender, 
The Colossal is compact and muscular, built for power rather than reach. Victor Vecchione, a veteran remotely operated vehicle pilot, recalls the first time a colossal squid flickered onto his sonar screen at 3,000 meters. He describes a moment of disbelief, an animal so massive it seemed to warp the scale of the ocean around it. He watched as the creature drifted just beyond the mechanical arm's reach, its eyes shining like headlights in the gloom. Nothing prepares you for it, he later admitted. You are left with the sense that you are looking at something the sea never meant you to see. Despite decades of searching, only a handful of colossal squids have ever been recovered. Most of what we know comes from rare encounters like the San Aspiring Catch, or from the scars and beaks found in the stomachs of sperm whales. The differences between these two titans, one built for speed and reach, the other for brute strength, remain a source of debate and wonder. Each specimen, each fleeting glimpse, is a reminder of how little we understand about the giants that haunt the planet's last true wilderness. The deep sea does not give up its secrets easily. For every answer, a dozen questions remain, suspended in the cold and the dark. The giant squid's eyes can reach 27 centimeters across, the largest in the animal kingdom, known from preserved specimens at the Smithsonian and Te Papa museums. Paired with the extreme depths of 300 meters or more, where battle scars on sperm whales are found, this reveals a deep sea arms race few humans have witnessed. Abyssal gigantism, influenced by cold temperatures, high oxygen, and slow metabolism, drives these squids to sizes far beyond their shallow water relatives. Yet despite hundreds of recovered beaks and the capture of a colossal squid weighing 495 kilograms in 2007, most of their lives remain hidden. No direct observation has yet explained every detail of their growth, behavior, or population size. Today, remotely operated vehicles continue to gather footage, but the true limits and adaptations of these giants are still under investigation. What is clear? In the depths, size is more than a mystery. It is survival written in flesh and scars, 